Today I want to take a look at how to create an Oracle instance in Azure. Here we are looking at portal.azure.com with the new resource menu. We'll go ahead and search for the keyword Oracle and we get a number of different results. I want to focus in on these first two, uh, Oracle 12, both standard and enterprise. But we have all kinds of other things too. Uh, Linux, there's an OMS collector, there's a web logic server, but we're going to go ahead and look at 12C Standard Edition. Pick the first one on the menu. And here we have a full featured database system ideal for mid sized companies. Uh, this is under Bring Your Own License, so we'll go ahead and take a look at our settings. Under Create, we have a couple of different prompts. <clears throat> we'll go ahead and pick a resource group, <clears throat> virtual machine name, we'll call it Oracle Test. That is available. Good. And for size, <clears throat> for CPU, 32 gigs. Okay. We will do Oracle Admin. And on our menu, we'll go ahead and do a, a password for Oracle Admin twice, and we'll do selected ports. Go ahead and choose all of the standard ones, SSH, RDP, HTTP, and HTTPS. We'll go next to look at the disk. The premium SSD is fine. Networking is fine. We can keep monitoring at the default settings. Advanced, nothing to select for extensions. Tags will leave empty. And we got our final review to go ahead and create a VM. So we see a confirmation screen here that says your deployment is underway. <clears throat> so now we see a confirmation that says your deployment is complete and go to resource. We'll go ahead and do that to navigate into the resource. And we'll copy the public IP address and go check a, an article. So over here in the article, it talks about how to create an Oracle database and an Azure VM. Going through all the steps, we kind of use the graphical menu to create the VM. But now we're down to the spot about connecting with SSH. So we're going to open up a command prompt here and do SSH with the username that we're looking for, Oracle Admin, at IP address, and hit Enter. Are you sure you want to continue? Yes. And we're going to get prompted for a password, which I'll go ahead and copy-paste in. There we are looking at the menu. From there, we want to do sudo su oracle. We want to provide the password again for an elevation request. And now we're elevated. Um, yeah, yeah, elevated up for sudo. OK, listener control start. Go ahead and execute that command next. And we see Oracle Listener Linux 12.1 uh, running for one second. And security levels, SMP, log files, all kinds of good uh, diagnostic details. So we switch to the Oracle Super User. Output is similar to the following. Looks good. So now we're going to go ahead and run a command to create a database. I can copy and paste that one in on the console as well. So here we see a message coming back that says copying database files 1% complete, but it looks like the dbca command with dash create database is going to make a general purpose template named cdb1 for us. And there are some system passwords and pdb passwords. Is it a uh, portable database? True. Storage type is F5. A couple of the parameters we need. Already see it moving up to 8%, making really good progress. This was a higher powered machine with 32 gigs of RAM and 4 core. Okay, so the database is moving along. It now shows 33% complete with creating and starting the Oracle instance. With our database created, we can review the log file. On the console, we see output for the database creation, percentages complete. We see the pluggable database and cdb1.log, which will have all of the line items for the database creation. If we go back into our browser, we can look up the next commands after dbca, which are going to be the environment variables Oracle Home and Oracle SID. 
I'll go ahead and paste those in. Now kicking back some errors because we're working locally and we're not connected to our remote bash command line. So let's go ahead and grab the IP address and we'll open SSH to that IP address. And this will give us a remote console into the bash environment. If we copy paste the username and password, we can go ahead and get an Oracle connection. And here we have a dollar sign prompt, which means we're successfully connected. At this point, we want to try our environment variable commands. And then we want to move into the next command, which is SQL plus for the Oracle EM Express connectivity. For a GUI management tool, you can use Oracle EM Express. So we'll go ahead and copy that command, paste it in. It says command not found. Interesting. And if we come back over and check about elevations, we can do our sudo su command, but that failed because it starts with a dollar sign. So we'll run a, we want to run the same command without the dollar sign prefix in a way that it can be successful. So we'll do sudo space su. We'll put in our Oracle admin username and password again, and this will elevate our prompt to a, a sudo status. Now I can try our SQL plus command again, but yet it says it's not found and probably has to do with the environment variables. So if we go ahead and copy those environment variable commands again, and this time place them in notepad, this will give us a spot where we can tweak our commands before executing them. Running the find command, find forward slash dash name SQL plus, gives us an option where we can search for that particular command and see what folder it might live in. I go ahead and copy that. DB home one slash bin. And we got some more environment path issues. We'll go ahead and paste those in. So now that we cleaned up the environment variables for path, we've pasted those in, we've set Oracle Home, and we've set Oracle SID. If we enumerate the contents after changing directory to DB Home Bin, we'll see that SQL Plus is in the local folder. So we'll go ahead and run path equals dollar path colon oracle home slash bin. That adds the bin folder to the path, not just the home, but it also adds slash bin. And now when we type in SQL plus, we are able to see the successful command with uh, version 12.1. So we want that extra path statement with path equals dollar path colon dollar oracle underscore home slash bin. Now we can go ahead and run our SQL plus as sysdba. And we get an Oracle error ORA 01017, invalid username password. And we have unable to connect to Oracle Plus after three attempts. If we come back over to our Azure portal, we can open up some of the TCP firewall ports, such as 1521 with any destination, port ranges 1521, priority 370, we can add the security rule, good. That'll allow traffic on 1521. We'll move the priority number up to make it unique. Same thing with the name. And now we can add the firewall rule. Now if we go to our Oracle SQL Developer GUI, 
we can create a new connection. And in the pop-up dialog, we give it a friendly name. And then we provide username, password, and our destination. We'll provide username, password, and our destination. Here we have Oracle admin with password. We'll go ahead and get the host name. That's our public IP address on the NIC for the Oracle test machine. And we can test a connection to port 1521. It resolved the SID to CDB1. That's the name of the database we created with DBCA earlier. We're using the system account with a password. Looking back over at the DBCA, the system password is a parameter, dash system password, and that's the password for the system user on this particular database. So your username is system, your password is the parameter provided, 1521, IP address, test DB. And the SID matches CDB1, same thing as our command line. So a lot of your command line parameters show up here in your connection dialog. The test says success in the bottom left, and now we can go ahead and connect and save the connection to our history. From here, if we expand the Oracle tree on the left-hand side, we're going to see views and tables and all of the different database objects for our new instance. So that shows how to create an Oracle instance in Azure and connect from the Oracle client tools. Thanks for watching.